Hey everybody, I wanted to give an introduction, an introduction to homology. Much like our discussion of homotopy equivalences, we're not going to define things rigorously, but we're going to give you a working definition to hopefully make you feel a little bit comfortable with it, the basic ideas, so that if you want to learn more, you're uh, perhaps inspired to do so. All right, so I'll say this again uh, after doing examples, but Roughly speaking, I-dimensional homology counts the number of I-dimensional holes in a space. Let me try to explain what I mean by that. Here I have three different examples. You know, let's talk about this example on the top. So zero-dimensional homology counts the number of zero-dimensional holes. And the number of zero-dimensional holes is just the number of connected components. So in this particular example, I have six different connected components, one, two, three, four, five, six. And, and they're different connected components because I can't walk inside the space from, from one connected component to a different one, right? They're, they're split apart. If, if my space actually looked like this, if there was a bridge here, now I would have only five connected components. You know, And if I had this other bridge, now in this space, I would only have four connected components, et cetera. So forget about this word, these words rank that I've put here, I'm trying to block them from view. Okay, but, but do focus on these numbers. So that six is there because six is counting the number of zero dimensional holes or connected components. This space is just one connected component. I can walk from anywhere on this space to any other spot on the space. So that's why I have um, uh, one zero dimensional hole. And what even is this space here? Uh, think of the space as the union of all the black vertices and black edges and red triangles. Or, you know, think of the space as the union of all the blue balls. This is also a connected space. There's a single connected component. I could walk from anywhere in the space to anywhere else. So, all right, so that's, that's what zero dimensional holes measure, just connected components. And these three examples have six, one, and one connected component. Let's talk about one dimensional homology. One dimensional homology is a loop. So my top space has zero loops in it. The space in the middle has three one-dimensional loops, you know, either around this hollow triangle or this hollow triangle or this pentagon. So that's why this number three is here. And the space on the bottom, it has six one-dimensional holes. This hole, two, um, three, four, five, and six. So in green, I've drawn loops around the six one-dimensional holes in this space. If you've heard of vector spaces before, um, vector spaces are something, um, they're very computational, oftentimes linear algebra, you're, you're working in vector spaces. It turns out that homology does more than just count the number of holes. It has, a homology group has the structure of a vector space and the rank or dimension of that vector space returns for you the number of holes. So that's why I have this word rank here. Um, homology groups, you should think of as vector spaces and the dimension of that vector space actually tells you the number of holes in your space. So you have a homology group for one dimensional holes. And in this example, it has uh, dimension six and you have a homology group for zero dimensional holes, a vector space. And in this example, it has dimension one. Let's not talk anymore about vector spaces though. Let's talk about two dimensional homology. So you have zero dimensional holes, one dimensional holes. You also have two dimensional holes. Two dimensional holes are voids that um, enclose air. You can sort of think of them. So this first example is a hollow sphere and it has a single two dimensional hole because you can fill this hollow sphere with jelly and the jelly doesn't spill out. 
here we have a hollow torus and it also has a single two dimensional hole. You can fill your donut with jelly and the, and the jelly doesn't spill out. You also have three dimensional holes and four dimensional holes, um, although I haven't tried to draw them here. To get some more practice, um, let's talk about the zero and one dimensional homology of this sphere and torus. So the sphere has one connected component. So it has one zero dimensional hole and the torus has one connected component. You can get anywhere on this torus from anywhere else. So it, it has one zero dimensional hole. What about the one dimensional holes? So on the sphere, I have zero one dimensional holes. And the reason is any loop that I try to draw on the sphere I could continuously shrink down as if it were made out of a rubber band and just shrink it down to a point. So I could draw a loop, but that's not a very, um, it's not an essential loop because I should, could just shrink that loop down. By contrast, the torus has two different one dimensional holes. You could loop around this way, or since it's hollow, you could loop around this way Right, and, and this would be another hole that can't be shrunk down. Um, you might ask, what about the loop that does the following? What about this red loop that starts, oh, that's a little too big, starts here, it loops around, it goes to the back side of the torus, so that's why I'm drawing it in dotted. Then it comes back up to the front like that. Why haven't I counted that loop, right? This loop in red um, is not the same as, as this loop just that just goes around on the top. And it's also not the same as this loop that goes around here. I haven't counted that red loop because it can actually be thought of as a linear combination of this loop that goes around the top and this loop that goes from the top to the bottom back up to the top. So that, that's really using the structure of the vector space. In this torus, there are really two main loops, that one and this one. And any other loop you can draw on the torus can be uh, represented as a combination of those two main ones. All right, so homology tells you the number of holes in each dimension in a space. And for example, this torus has a single connected component and it has two one dimensional holes going around this way or that way. And it has a single two dimensional hole because you could fill it with jelly and the jelly doesn't spill out. So even shapes that you can't quite visualize yet, like a data set, you can compute their homology groups sometimes and they tell you some information about the various holes in a space. I've hidden lots of the subtleties about homology. And so for example, I, I haven't really mentioned the homology of the Klein bottle towards you um, for one version of homology, the homology of the Klein bottle is the same as that of the torus, but for other versions of homology, the homology of the Klein bottle is different than that of the torus. So it does get complicated, um, but it's really beautiful math, and, and I like the intuition, something computable on a computer that can tell you the number of holes of, of each dimension in a space. Public questions. Thanks so much.